Dakota Politics with Nicholas Qualick, Josh Manny, and political correspondent Maddie Beer Temple. A good Sunday to you. Thank you for joining us for Inside North Dakota Politics. I'm Nicholas Qualick. I'm Josh Manny. And I'm Maddie Beer Temple. Closer and closer, we are now just less than three weeks away from Election Day, which means early voting continues. There's also a little time left for those who haven't voted to consider how they'll vote. And we'll focus on one issue on the ballot here in North Dakota. That is Measure 2. Later, we'll hear from two men, each of whom will explain their views. But first, let's take a look at the week that was. President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden held competing town hall events on Thursday. The events replaced the second presidential debate after President Trump declined to participate virtually. The president tested positive for COVID-19 two days after the last debate. Pushed by reporter Savannah Guthrie, he would not say whether or not he was tested the day of the debate, which had an honor system requiring both candidates be tested. I don't know. I don't even remember. I test all the time. You don't know if you got a test on the day of the debate? I have no problem. Again, the doctors do it. I don't ask them. I, I test all the time. Did you take a test on the day of the debate, I guess, uh, is the I bottom line? I probably did, and I took a test the day before and the day before, and I was always in great shape. So okay. just to button it up, do you take a test every single day? No, no, but I take a lot of tests. Okay, and you don't know if you took a test the day of the debate? Uh, uh, possibly I did, possibly I didn't. At the same time, Joe Biden took questions from George Stephanopoulos. He admitted that he's not a fan of expanding the number of seats on the Supreme Court, an idea growing in popularity among fellow Democrats as Republicans push through Judge Amy Coney Barrett weeks before the election. Well, I'm not a fan. I didn't say it depends on how this turns out, not how he wins, but how it's handled, how it's handled. I mean, it depends on how much they rush this. That process was well underway this week as the Senate Judiciary Committee held four days of hearings with Judge Barrett. On day three, the Supreme Court nominee pushed back on a line of questioning about whether she was aware of President Trump's opposition to Obamacare when she wrote an essay criticizing a court decision that upheld the law. All these questions, you're, you're suggesting that I have animus or that I cut a deal with the president. And I was very clear yesterday that that isn't what happened. My question is simply, were you aware of President Trump's opposition to the Affordable Care Act during that time? I want to okay. stress, I have no animus to or agenda for the Affordable Care Act. So to the extent you're suggesting this was like an open letter okay. to uh, President Trump, it was not. The committee is slated to vote on her confirmation on Thursday. Moving locally now, many more North Dakotans than usual are casting their votes by mail this year. That, of course, is because of the ongoing pandemic. At his weekly press conference to discuss COVID-19, Governor Doug Burgum spent several minutes urging North Dakotans to find their own personal reasons to slow the spread of the virus. He said public health measures have been conflated with politics, and that's making the pandemic more challenging. Every aspect of dealing with this pandemic, from testing to social distancing to face coverings to vaccines, has been debated, it's been challenged, and unfortunately, and perhaps because it is a presidential election year, they've all been politicized. That's a point Governor Burgum's Democratic NPL challenger Shelley Lenz agrees with. But she told KX News she thinks the governor, by choosing not to mandate mask usage, is choosing a political side in the pandemic. She disagrees with Bergam's view that the efficacy of mask mandates is inconclusive. Universal mask use will slow the spread as we get that structure in, in, in place. Like if he could do just one thing, if he could find the courage or find his why, to do one thing is to institute universal mask usage in North Dakota today. And on Friday, 16 counties in North Dakota were moved from the moderate COVID risk level to high risk. North Dakota's attorney general has given his opinion on how to handle an unusual election situation. Wayne Stengem said that if Republican State House candidate David Ondahl wins his race, the GOP would choose his replacement unless enough district voters call for a special election. Andal died earlier this month after he had been sick with COVID-19 for several days. Secretary of State Al Jager said it was too late to remove him from the ballot. Attorney General Wayne Stengem says if Andal is elected, the office would be deemed vacant. Under state law, a committee representing his party would fill the opening by appointment. But voters in the district are allowed to petition for a special election. 
Still to come on Inside North Dakota Politics, should the legislature have a say in voter-initiated measures? Up next, the four between two leaders on both sides of that issue, Measure 2. Stay tuned. Disease of addiction affects every family, business, and community in our state. Now more than ever, we all need to come together to support recovery. Join us for Recovery Reinvented on October 28th. There are all kinds of voters, like early voter Ed or absentee Abby. No? How about vote by mail Marie or election day Dave? Ed does everything early. Dave's not late, but he's also not early. Marie's got this. Abby can't miss out. There she is. They all made plans to make sure their voices are heard. What's your plan? Visit vote.nd.gov. Voting in North Dakota, it takes all kinds. Look what 288 buys today at iKeating Furniture World. A beautiful sofa like this, just 288. Kick back and relax in a great recliner, only 288. Dining sets, just 288. Queen beds, only 288. Look around, you'll be amazed how you can get so much for so little, just 288. Plus, many items throughout the store for only 388 and even 488. Plus, enjoy no interest for one full year. So don't pay more, get more for less. It's the one low price that's oh so nice. Furniture starting at just 288 at iKeating Furniture World. The whole works is uh, awesome. North Dakota has built a living tribute to veterans and their spouses, a place they call home, a home where fellow veterans relish in the camaraderie of their peers, a home where staff are truly vested in the lives of those they care for. The North Dakota Veterans Home has 52 skilled nursing home beds and 98 basic care beds with rooms that are private and have a private bathroom. A living tribute to veterans and their spouses in Lisbon, North Dakota. Only one in 10 people who need treatment will actually receive it. Stigma prevents people from reaching out for help. Join us in ending the stigma of addiction and empowering recovery at Recovery Reinvented. Reserve your space now at recoveryreinvented.com. To Inside North Dakota Politics on KX. There's a lot that's been happening in day-to-day -day life, which makes it hard to stay informed on every single piece of news. But at the same time, we do feel it's important for you to know not only what you'll be voting on, but the history of the issues themselves. What's known as Measure 2 is what we'll be looking into today. Joining us in the studio is one of those responsible for the resolution, North Dakota Republican Senator Dick Dever. We're also joined by Dustin Garberwell, Managing Director of the North Dakota Watchdog Network, who opposes this measure. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Senator, if I may start with you, could you tell us the idea about this resolution, how it came about, and why you support this measure? This resolution has been in the works for quite some time. We looked at how we amend our constitution in North Dakota on a 50% plus one vote without any kind of a public hearing or any kind of uh, real discussion. And we thought it's important the constitution in a republic protects the minority from the majority. So to amend it on a simple majority really makes the, the, the Constitution kind of meaningless. So in order to protect that process, we brought my measure two for consideration of the people. And Dustin, tell us about the North Dakota Watchdog Network and why you would like to see this measure receive a no vote. Well, the North Dakota Watchdog Network is a uh, nonprofit uh, advocacy group that, that tries to protect the uh, uh, taxpayers in North Dakota and keep an eye on government. And one of those things is protecting the powers reserved to the people, which is Article 3 of the North Dakota Constitution. And the, it's our belief that those powers, because they are pr genuinely protected in the Constitution and the, the word reserved is there, uh, should not involve the legislature at all. And, and in fact, in, in Section 1 of Article 3, uh, the last sentence says exactly, laws may be enacted to facilitate and safeguard, but not to hamper, restrict, or impair these powers. And uh, by injecting the legislature into that role and giving the legislature a veto over the people once the people have voted yes, uh, the, the legislature is contradicting that particular sentence and uh, reducing the ability of the people of North Dakota to set the framework by which the legislature operates. 
Okay. Now, Senator, you are one of three with your name on this initiative. Um, since you're the only one here today, can you tell us why you signed on? I signed on because I genuinely believe in the Constitution, mm -hmm. that the Constitution is the framework around which the Republic stands. It, it, it becomes the standard by which all statutes are measured. Mm -hmm. The comment that, that Dustin just made regarding hamper, hinder, and it says no law shall be passed. The legislature cannot change one word in the Constitution. So measure two is placed there for the voters to consider. Mm -hmm. The Constitution can only be amended by a vote of the voters. So to say that, that, that this law will hinder, hamper uh, that process, it's asking the voters to put it in the Constitution. It's not creating a law by the legislature. So the voters have the ability to amend their own Constitution. And let me follow up on that. Why this measure now, at this moment in time? Well, I think it's, uh, it's, it's been in the works for a while, and, okay. and there have been some uh, measures placed on the, on the ballot that really uh, have created problems. You know, regarding the Constitution and statute, there were two measures passed in 2016. Marcy's Law was a constitutional measure. Medical marijuana was a statutory measure. Nobody can change Marcy's Law now that it's in the Constitution. The only way to change it is with another measure to change the Constitution. It did not get the kind of conversation that it should have had. The most dangerous law is the law of unintended consequences, and that's Marcy's Law. Medical mar marijuana, on the other hand, um, was a statutory measure. The legislature can make changes to statutory measures with a two-thirds vote in the first seven years or a simple majority uh, beyond that time. We've taken a lot of criticism on the medical marijuana measure. We, the only mistake we made with that is that we haven't defended why we did that. If we had not acted on the medical marijuana, we would still be waiting for a nonprofit organization to step forward and make the huge investments that were necessary as was required in the measure. So if the, if the legislature would have wanted to frustrate the effort with medical marijuana, what they would have done is nothing and just let it stand. Now, similarly, Dustin, what, if any, personal connections do you have to this measure? Uh, I have been involved in initiated measures since 2008 when we uh, unsuccessfully tried to cut the state income tax in half. And uh, I've been involved in a half dozen other uh, measures in various roles, advisor, that sort of thing. Uh, and, and since 2013 in particular, the legislature has tried over and over at least a dozen uh, resolutions and, and laws were attempted to be passed by the legislature since 2013 when uh, some other uh, citizens attempted to abolish the property tax in North Dakota. That's really what started this process of trying to make it more difficult to change the Constitution. Marcy's Law and the Ethics Commission after that in two, 2018 uh, emboldened the legislature to do this. And it, it's uh, our belief that the Th there, there are some issues with the out-of-state money uh, influencing North Dakota's constitution. We concede that. We tried to fix that in 2017 with a uh, Senate Bill uh, 2336, which was defeated by the Senate, at, which would have uh, given uh, some, some regulatory powers on that out-of-state money. But we believe that the people who do not have access to a lot of out-of-state money or a lot of financing in general are the ones that are going to get hurt the most by Measure 2 if it passes. We're going to drill down onto the outside influences when we come back. So stay right there. We'll have much more with Senator Dever and Justin Garvalo on Inside North Dakota Politics right after this. KX News is honoring those who served by featuring our local veterans each night at 10. 
Starting October 14th and leading up to Veterans Day, we'll celebrate veterans in our community, their patriotism, their love of country, and their willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good. KX News is putting our veterans first with Veterans Voices each night on KX News at 10. Sponsored by DCI Credit Services, Little Caesars, North Star Community Credit Union, and McDonald's. Friday Night Football Frenzy is back. Join KX Sports for all the scores and highlights of the best high school football action from around the region. Friday Night Football Frenzy at 10, only on KX News. Sponsored by ENG Lending. Menards is the floor you're looking for. We carry more than 200 styles of flooring options in stock. Carpet from Shaw gives your floors a luxurious look and feel. Right now, all Shaw carpet is 11% off. And if tile is what you're looking for, check out all the porcelain and ceramic tile from Mohawk. For floors, walls, or mosaic tile, get 11% off all Mohawk tile. Save with 11% off everything at Menards. Save big money at Menards. With a unique spirit and unrivaled grit, nothing stops a North Dakotan. It's no surprise Governor Doug Burgum's balancing the budget without raising taxes, strengthening and diversifying the economy, and forged peaceful resolution with out-of-state protesters. North Dakota always overcomes. Now Burgum and North Dakota are confronting a global pandemic and rising to the challenge, saving lives and livelihoods. Confident we'll emerge stronger because that's the North Dakota way. Thursday at 6.30. How are we surviving this imperfect storm in 2020? What is the stress of the election and all of the uncertainty doing to our mental health? Join us for a KX News Town Hall. Tune out the negative. Thursday at 6.30 on KX. To Inside North Dakota Politics on KX. Welcome back. Now, Senator Dever, when I spoke with you last month, you both actually brought up concerns with outside influences in the election. How would passing this measure help that? Well, what the measure would do is if it's passed the first time, it would go to the legislature where there would be public hearings. That's what we do. If the legislature uh, votes in favor of it, all the legislature is doing is making a recommendation if it votes in favor of it, it's a good idea. It goes in the Constitution. If not, as Dustin says, uh, it's vetoed. And we can use that term if he wants. That's a good thing. Our founders put checks and balances sure. into the process. So a veto actually it is an important part of that. When the governor vetoes a bill, he writes a letter to the legislature and says, I'm vetoing this, and this is why. It doesn't stop the process. It just says, take another look and consider this perspective. That's what will happen with Measure 2. So people can vote more confidently the first time if they think it's a good idea, then gain the information, and the second time they will be more informed on voting on that. Mm -hmm. And it will have gone through a process that will flush out uh, any potential problems with it or unintended consequences. Dustin, how would a no vote affect that? Well, it, it's our opinion that, that Measure 2 will actually increase the amount of out-of-state money that is flooded into North Dakota by the fact that we're taking a process that is currently roughly an 18-month process from start to finish, and if the legislature exercises its veto, turns that into a three-year campaign. As somebody who's been involved in campaigns for 15 years, when you double the length that you need the campaign, you need two to three times as much money to be successful. And the, those uh, groups that have access to millions of dollars now will have access to even more money later. And so uh, this is really going to push uh, true grassroots organizations and, and citizens out of the process because it's going to take much more money to uh, keep the attention of voters for three years if the legislature doesn't like what the people voted yes on. And Senator Dever, when we spoke last time, you said the process you think needs to be more deliberate for amending the Constitution. Um, can you point to an example where it wasn't? Well, I, I think uh, any of those measures that have passed, Marcy's Law is an example of that. Marcy's Law exists in the North Dakota Constitution because a billionaire in California wanted it in the North Dakota Constitution, and he had the money to make it happen. Now, the people in North Dakota who were involved in that process had the best of intentions with it. 
Marcy's Law primarily already existed in statute, but they wanted it in the Constitution. Now, because of those unintended consequences, there are all kinds of complications with it. Media organizations uh, have real problems with the lack of transparency or the protection that, that, that some people have uh, with confidentiality in Marcy's Law. Had that gone through this process with Measure 2, which, by the way, takes us back to exactly the way it was in 1914 when the initiated measure process was created, there would have been those discussions with state's attorneys and, and law enforcement and, and the courts that would have been able to say, if you pass this, this will complicate things. Now, something uh, else I think that, that happens with this, if it does turn into a process where the legislature votes against it and has to go to a second one, the people involved with it have an opportunity to say, what were the concerns of the legislature? Maybe we should rewrite this and start the process over. If the people voted on it the first time, they thought it was a good idea. The question is, how do you do it? And that's what would, would be taken care of with a more deliberative process. Okay, and Dustin, final question. We had about uh, 30 seconds left. Why do you believe the process works the way it is now? Uh, Article 3 of the state constitution creates a check and balance on the legislature and puts the people in that position. It is not meant to, to create a system where the legislature can override the people. It is entitled powers reserved to the people. It does not say powers reserved to the people unless the legislature agrees or disagrees. Uh, we, we believe that as it stands right now, there are things that can be done to address uh, Senator Dever and the others who have concerns. Measure 2 does not actually do what they think it's going to do, and it's going to make it more difficult for real North Dakotans who do not have access to millions of dollars to influence the uh, system that their state legislature and governor uh, operate under. Gentlemen, we are out of time. Thank you so much. We appreciate it, and we hope this was informative to you. Stay with us. We're back in just a moment. Attention employers, find the help you need with KXNet Virtual Job Fair, October 28th and 29th. This online hiring event will allow you to connect with local job seekers virtually and get your position filled fast. Register today on kxnetjobs.com. KX News is honoring those who served by featuring our local veterans. KX News, putting our veterans first with veterans voices each night on KX News at 10. Brought to you in part by these great sponsors. There are all kinds of voters, like early voter Ed or absentee Abby. No? How about vote by mail Marie or election day Dave? Ed does everything early. Dave's not late, but he's also not early. Marie's got this. Abby can't miss out. There she is. They all made plans to make sure their voices are heard. What's your plan? Visit vote.nd.gov. Voting in North Dakota, it takes all kinds. Look what 288 buys today at iKeating Furniture World. A beautiful sofa like this, just 288. Kick back and relax in a great recliner, only 288. Dining sets, just 288. Queen beds, only 288. Look around, you'll be amazed how you can get so much for so little, just 288. Plus, many items throughout the store for only 388 and even 488. Plus, enjoy no interest for one full year. So don't pay more, get more for less. It's the one low price that's oh so nice. Furniture starting at just 288 at iKeating Furniture World. Studio 701, weekday mornings at 9, right here on KX. Inside North Dakota Politics on KX. From pipelines to utility rates, the Public Service Commission handles a lot of things in North Dakota. And one of the three seats is up for election this year. Maddie, you met the two candidates. Yes, Josh and Nicholas. I caught up with the incumbent Republican Brian Crocious and nonpartisan leaguer Casey Buckman. 
North Dakota's Public Service Commission has three members, with one up for re-election every two years. This year, it's Chairman Brian Crocious. He was appointed to the commission by Governor Doug Burgum in 2017 to fill a vacancy and was elected the following year. Crocious spent three decades in the private sector, which included 10 years as publisher of the Bismarck Tribune. Those elements, along with doing business in the community, and not just in Bismarck, Mandan, but across the state, I think has... Uh, prepared me in a good way. I, I think I have a, a good handle on what uh, everyday citizens want out of government. Crocious's challenger Casey Buckman is running on the Democratic NPL ticket. Buckman's experience includes 30 years as a union iron worker who says he's worked in many of the areas the PSC regulates. My firsthand knowledge to the insight of it, uh, how everything works, brings a diff different aspect to what anybody offers there on the Public Service Commission now. The PSC regulates rates for electric and natural gas utilities. It also approves applications for gas processing plants, power plants, and of course, pipelines. Regarding the expansion of the Dakota Access Pipeline, which the PSC unanimously voted in favor of this February, Crocious says the process was transparent and legal. Those hearings in particular, uh, that's about whether or not the company is meeting the requirements set forth in law. And we determined uh, that the company did. Buckman says the legal controversy surrounding the pipeline should have prompted a closer look at the situation. I'm all for jobs, but uh, I probably would have ruled in favor of it, but I also would have looked at and said, hey, this is what could happen. Maybe we should hold off construction on it. I would have said something. Both candidates gave their final pitches to voters. Uh, we need to set the table so future generations have more opportunity than we have today. And I think there is ample opportunity in the state. I'm a person who would listen to the people, will listen to their voices, and it would be something very different. Bismarck is a bog, and the deeper you, you know, the deeper you dig into a bog, it gets really stinky. So, you know, I'd be a... Uh, fresh air and a stinky bob. Whoever is elected will serve a six-year term on the commission. Reporting in Bismarck for KX News, Maddie Beer Temple. And this isn't the first time those two candidates have gone head-to-head. -head. In 2018, Crocious beat Buckman by a 24-point margin in an election to finish the two years of the term left vacant by Brian Kalk, who took a new job. And by the way, Josh and Nicholas, when Buckman talks about bringing fresh air to the commission, he mentioned that two of the three current commissioners, commissioners initially got on the council through appointment before they were eventually elected. He says if they were elected, that would be a change. All right. Thanks, Maddie. That's all the time we have for inside North Dakota politics. We hope you join us next week. Enjoy your Sunday.